If you are worried you have Lyme disease or just like the outdoors and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to the latest episode of Outbreak News Interviews. Now, this week we got the latest data from uh, the CDC on sexually transmitted infections their annual sexually transmitted disease surveillance report was released, which told us some serious problems were happening with STDs in this country. More than 2 million cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis were reported in the U.S. in 2016, the highest number ever. Perhaps most tragic is the continued increase in congenital syphilis. In 2016, there were a total of 628 reported cases, including 41 syphilitic stillbirths. Uh, the national rate was 15.7 cases per 100,000 live births. Now this is nearly double the 334 cases reported in 2012. Well, joining me now to discuss congenital syphilis and what's going on with these increases is Amesh Adalja, MD. Dr. Adalja is a senior associate with the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Dr. Adalja, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Now, most people know that syphilis is a serious bacterial infection that is transmitted primarily through sexual contact. However, not everyone knows about congenital syphilis. So what is it, and how does the baby become infected? <clears throat> well, what, what congenital syphilis is is when a uh, developing baby develop, develops the infection as it's transmitted from an infected mother. So a pregnant woman may have syphilis, become infected with syphilis during her pregnancy, and then transmit it to her, to the developing fetus. And then that fetus is then infected with the, the bacteria that causes syphilis, and it can lead to very severe problems, including as, as, uh, as uh, severe as stillbirth, which you mentioned earlier. Right. Now, now some of the other uh, horrible effects of congenital syphilis uh, that are not fatal, um, what are they? Well, it's it's a spectrum, and you have to remember syphilis is they call it the great pretender because it can affect it affect many different organ systems in a body. So somebody with congenital syphilis could a, a baby could have anything ranging from they could be born with a rash, they could be born with an enlarged liver, they could be born with jaundice, they can have bone abnormalities, they can have basically any organ system can be affected by syphilis. So there's a wide range of of uh, manifestations in a, in a baby that's born with congenital syphilis. So that's why it, it's, it's such a dangerous disease because any organ system can be infected and it can be something that really presents with other types of symptoms. And you have to think this maybe this, this, this baby has congenital syphilis because testing wasn't done during pregnancy. So you really have to think about everything when you think about syphilis because this bacteria is so able to affect all parts of a body. Now, this is all treatable and preventable, isn't it? Right. Congenital syphilis is something that shouldn't really occur. What should stop it is testing of people for syphilis at the first prenatal visit and then in high-risk patients in, throughout the pregnancy if there's a continued expo possible exposure to syphilis. So this is something that we can easily control and, and had controlled for a while, but it's starting to kind of slip away. And can you just mention what the treatment is? Usually it's a, it's a course of antibiotics. Penicillin is the standard treatment that you that you do, and it, it, depending upon the stage of syphilis that someone is diagnosed with, uh, the duration of the penicillin may vary. So, Dr. Adalja, so what's going on? Uh, why are we seeing this increase? It's up 28% from last year. Raw numbers are from 492 cases in 2016 to 628 in just one year. What's going on? 
it's going to be hard to uh, tease out everything because obviously each lo- geographic location in each case of syphilis is going to have its own idiosyncratic variables that are that are responsible for why this per- person acquired syphilis and then transmitted it to an unborn child. But at the most basic level, it really has to do with the fact that people are probably not testing enough for syphilis. So this should be a standard thing done at, the, at a prenatal visit and that it also should be done multiple times during the pregnancy if a person has continued exposure to syphilis through unsafe sexual practices. So really what has to be done is an aggressive outreach to those who are taking care of pregnant women to to make sure that these people are being tested and, and then connected to treatment. And, and it also may be that people may be, may be presenting late in their pregnancy and not having the routine screening tests done, and that, that's also another issue. So it really has to be, the data really has to be looked at in, in great detail to figure out exactly why these cases are occurring and, and trying to d- design solutions that really attack the, the problem of, of where the breakdown is. Is it people aren't getting tested initially? Is it that people are not getting repeat testing? Or is it that people are presenting late in pregnancy and not getting any te- any testing? So really you have to to augment the testing because this is something that you're only going to discover if you use the diagnostic test, which is very easy to do and very accurate. So that's really what has to be on as a scale up of testing and, and figuring out where this is all where this is falling through the cracks. Yeah, and essentially, so the testing and these other things that you mentioned, this is what's going to get this issue under control. Right. It it really is a a diagnosing people and then linking them to care. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Amesh Adalja, once again for your time and expertise, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet.